people saying just I want out um, for there to be great problems in the industry, in the banking industry. So yeah, I think that's all of these things expect to see more and more and more of doesn't surprise me one bit at all. First of all, you know, I think what they're saying is that the that the EU needs to roll back its sanctions in exchange for Russia resuming gas deliveries to that content first and foremost as they've kind of, you know, shut down the the pipeline so to speak and now they're talking about accepting it in other currencies as well and I think it it just confirms that Russia doesn't need to pretend any longer that it needs to export commodities through Europe there's more than enough demand in India and in China and I think you know it, it makes sense I think you know if you if you realize that uh, when you talk about the Russian reserves in dollars and euros and pounds and yen, th they were frozen. So it's unlikely, I think, going forward, I think you'll see more of this, that any of these countries will want to continue accumulating reserves in these currencies. And I think that, you know, it will be more along their national currencies like you're seeing here or in gold. Uh, I think it's it's very telling. And I did a little research over the weekend and I realized that the numbers are getting even crazier than I'd ever thought. First of all, uh, you have six of the 13 OPEC countries right now uh, are in or are um, in the process of joining the BRICS nations. The seventh, the United Arab Emirates, um, is, is, has signed up with a new development bank. And that new development bank is operated by the BRICS. But a lot of countries that aren't in uh, Asia, or Africa are also signing on to it. And one of the things that I found to be incredibly interesting is that every single one of the 13 OPEC countries are in the Belt Road Initiative, every single one. And so when you talk about a shift away from the dollar and away from the, the petrol reserve status, it's happening right in front of us. Not only that, you have Russia considering a plan to buy as much as 70 billion in yuan and other friendly currencies, as they call it, in order to slow the rise of, of the, the ruble. But, you know, that was money that always went into dollars and into euros. So you are seeing a de-dollarization happen in real time. And, you know, it's one thing to talk about this um, in, in summer. Uh, let's have this discussion again in November and December and see what it looks like when you know, the gas is shut off to, to Germany and to parts of, of the European Union, uh, how different the tone will be. Uh, I think this is just more of the same done again and, and, and really crystallizes my belief that this is this linear progression I keep talking about, where little by little by little by little. There's a term in, uh, if I remember right way back from high school, uh, in literature called the fallacy of composition which basically says these individual pieces in and of themselves don't carry the same weight as all of them put together. And you put them all together and you see a puzzle piece or pieces of a puzzle that are beginning to take shape and form, form something that I think if you just look at the in individual pieces, they're not as impressive. Put it all together and, and you can see 80, 90 percent of the world's population is forming an alliance. And whether it is stated obviously or you have to kind of put the pieces together to see it, I think it's becoming very, very obvious. And um, I think you should expect to see more of this as we continue down this road here in 2022. Because all of that in years past would have settled in dollars as the world reserve currency. And the lack of demand for the dollar, just go back to the, the X axis you learned in Econ 101, less demand means greater supply, or another way of saying that, less demand means a lowered price for the dollar. So as the world moves away from the dollar, you have less and less and less and less demand. Well, another way of saying that is where are those dollars going? Um, I think those dollars become hot potatoes. Those dollars are going to be sold for other things or other assets. And as those dollars come home, if we think inflation is bad now, what happens when a good portion of the world starts to sell dollars uh, in favor of their local currencies or in favor of gold. You look at, for example, this month uh, or last month, India imported 46.5 tons 
or 1.49 million ounces of gold. And they imported over 1,136.5 tons or 36.54 million ounces of silver. And that was in June. The July numbers are looking to be about 1,700 tons um, uh, or 54.7 million ounces, again, uh, of silver. And that's kind of unofficial. Those haven't come out yet, but that's the whisper as they're talking about, Ed Steer was talking about. And when we talk about Turkey, uh, Turkey, again, this is a country that is now joining the BRICS nations, right? They imported 22.4 tons of gold or 720,200 ounces and 92.3 tons of silver during last month. The countries that are de-dollarizing, the countries that are expressing interest in joining the BRICS nations or are members of the BRICS nations are massively accumulating assets or paying for them in currencies other than the dollar. And that lack of demand for the dollar will have massive negative implications for the value of the dollar back here at home. So while we really don't care what Russia is buying uh, energy for or what Turkey is buying energy for or, or, you know, in and of itself, but you should because all of those things used to settle in dollars and now the lack of dollar demand means less demand for the dollar means a falling dollar value means higher interest rates and more inflation. And that's the bottom line. And and the Fed to me is a sideshow. The Fed really is a sideshow. Look, they may get tough on inflation. The market still doesn't believe it yet because the one year treasury right now is, is, is over three and a half percent. That's greater than the two, the five, and the ten year. That's as inverted as it as it gets. I don't know if I've ever seen it so inverted. The one year Treasury is just a few ticks away. It's like three point two or three point three versus three point five or six on the thirty year Treasury bond. Who would want to to get virtually the exact same return for a thirty year uh, bond versus a one year? That's a massive inversion. So the market still believes the Fed is going to pivot. The Fed is trying to act tough. Uh, Powell saying that his hero was Paul Volcker, who who blew up the economy to save the currency and, and inflation. Well, you know, that's what he's intimating he's going to do. But he's not. He hasn't. They really haven't done the quantitative tightening yet. They haven't really done much in the way of raising rates. Again, with inflation at eight and a half percent and the federal funds rate at two and a quarter, they haven't done anything. They haven't gotten tough. Maybe they continue to raise them little by little by little. And, you know, that's going to have effects of their own. But when we see all of these countries joining together one by one, it seems like every week there's a new story that falls in line with this progression of events that I have been talking to you about for going on two years now. And the progression continues to grow. And, you know, at some point, there's going to be an announcement. At some point, there's going to be that that you know, that Rubicon that we cross where you know, the point of no return is crossed, where all of a sudden, hey, just like uh, the BRICS nations came out a few weeks ago and said, we're going to issue a new world reserve currency. Well, what happens when that becomes a reality? What happens if they do use the distributed ledger technology, even if it's a, a private permission only blockchain issued by the, the PBOC or by the BRICS nations? But, but, you know, you can see it. You can see what's on there. You don't have to be able to trade on it, but you can see the validity of whatever they're using to peg a new system. You'll be able to see it. And I think that's coming. I really do. I think that the way to break the dollar hegemony is not one country. It's not China. It's not Russia. It's not India. It's all of them together. And when you see the massive amount of countries joining in on this endeavor. When you see every member of OPEC is in the Belt Road Initiative, but the Belt Road Initiative is Asia and Africa. I mean, you're talking a large portion of the BRICS. It, they're all coming together and not immediately and not in a way that is really easy for people to see, but little by little by little. And then bang, they're going to initiate, something's going to happen. And they're going to say, you know, thanks for the memories, new system. And that's when things get really frightening in this country as dollars are dumped globally, as interest rates spike, as as the massively overvalued asset prices react inversely to that rise in rates. So why should someone care? They should really care because, because 
this is a progression of events that isn't slowing down. It's accelerating. Yeah, well, add that to the linear progression of events. Add that to the, the fallacy of composition. In and of itself, not as big of a deal, but putting it together, it becomes, a, I believe, a far bigger deal. And yeah, you know, I think that's that's to be expected. But not only that, look at, at the amount of gold that is being taken off of the exchanges. This uh, uh, Just this last week, we had off the COMEX market 189,471 ounces of gold taken off the COMEX market and 1,155,315 ounces of silver taken out of the COMEX depository. So, you know, you're, you're beginning to see big money run for the exits. And I think it, it, it I think these people are, are uh, the banks are certainly alerted, I think, to, to people's um, anxiety. Uh, they have to be done again because all the people that I talk to, I mean, the overreaching theme is I don't feel safe leaving my money in the bank. I don't feel safe leaving my my money in the bank. And so, you know, I think they're probably seeing what is kind of a precursor, perhaps, or they're trying to stem a run on the banks. And maybe we're very early in making a statement like that. But heck, you know, um, the the banks are undercapitalized and they're over leveraged and it wouldn't take too much of that type of people saying just I want out um, for there to be great problems in the industry in the banking industry so yeah I think that's all of these things expect to see more and more and more of doesn't surprise me one bit at all. <laughs>